after the Olympics, how did you deal with kind of the post-competition emotions? Uh, yeah, so I mean, ultimately, in the individual event, I was unable to land the triple loxel and um, you know, making mistakes at the Olympic Games, there just isn't room for that. And so I think uh, I was super proud of myself after the team event, but I was also really disappointed that I was unable to uh, rise above my own pressures and and deliver for the United States. And I think that was something that I, um, you know, could have... Wish I could have handled a little bit better. There is so much pressure on the athletes, particularly from big and powerful countries like the United States. That medal count is something that you see a lot. After I had landed the triple axe on the team event, it felt like I was almost expected to land the jump in the individual. And I expected myself to land it as well. And so when it just... Uh, it's just like a one second element and when it didn't go my way it was so upsetting I, I just I mean I wish I could do it over but you know it just wasn't meant to be for me um, but I think that and you hit a was, rut that time right yeah and I, I it's hard to give an excuse for why you know like you hit a certain patch of the ice that just isn't great but yeah it just sounds like you're kind of whining and complaining and so I think that yeah I um yeah I think I really struggled with making that mistake and and um I after the Olympics just kind of was so tired mentally just so tired um I mean I mean you know, with figure skating, it's like a sport that pe uh, people only really pay attention to during the Olympics. And I mean, that's the story of our careers. It's like, oh, like, you know, you're constantly being asked, did you go to the Olympics? I mostly only watch figure skating during the Olympics. So you go from like three and a half years of being used to your own rhythm. And then all of a sudden, like everybody from who's any, anybody wants to talk to you. And, and it became a, a lot like I, I felt like whatever I was saying, I was being held accountable for. After the Olympics, it was like, so much going on in my schedule until one day it was suddenly nothing and it was kind of like okay like I knew this day was going to come but what what do I do now and you know as much as I love my parents so much for all they've done for me it just wasn't something that I could really ask my parents and I I mean I was going to school but it was kind of like I just don't have that same feeling of having that purpose in my life and mm -hmm. knowing what I that what ignites the fire and passion in me like skating does yeah and so I had to I decided to start to seek outside help mm. and so I, I started talking to a therapist and it was something that I wish I had done a lot sooner because I thought that I was really taking care of my mental well-being by working with a sports psychologist. Mm. And I love my sports psychologist, but the focus was more on how I was going to compete well yeah. instead of like, what else am I good at outside of skating? And what am I going to do after skating? And, um, you know, like, kind of like, what, what else do I have going for me? Like, I didn't know. Yeah. You mentioned that, you know, a therapist is somebody not attached to your, your, your life in a way. It's not your friends. It's not your family. It's also, you know, we rarely talk about ourselves continuously with like one person. Like every, so there was therapy, most of the times you go every week and, and you only talk about yourself. Um, yeah, you talk about other people too, but it's, it's in how it relates to you. And you only talk about yourself for that, you know, 45 minutes an hour every single week with this this continuous relationship that you have that's not attached to your 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 life in a way and I think that's a really special opportunity for therapy and it seems like it's it was helpful for you 
Uh, yeah, I think that our mental health is not something to be ignored. And when you're feeling lost or when you're feeling like you need some guidance, it's okay to reach out and ask for help. And, you know, I think that the older generations are trying really hard to make sure that knowledge of these resources are available to everybody because I just didn't have that knowledge when I was younger. And it wasn't until I was older that I was able to understand how to access these resources and ask for help. And it's okay to reach out and to ask a friend what they think you should do. And I think it's, it's um, instead of bottling it all up, which is, I feel like what I did a lot of the time, I think that it's okay to rely on others and to be vulnerable. And I think that the world looks like a much less intimidating place when you're able to share your hardships and um, take care of your well-being, however that may be. That's really wonderful and such an important message. There's um, two particular uh, figure skating moments that always bring tears to my to me uh, every single time I, I think about it or or talk about it or, or or watch it on YouTube. Midori Ito's second triple axel attempt at 1992 Olympics, because like just thinking about what it must have been for her to decide that she's going to go for another triple axel at this very end of this Olympics that wasn't going well for her. And the second one is Daisuke Takahashi's last step sequence of the Sochi Olympics. When he was injured before the Olympics, was visibly so disappointed and frustrated about this timing and his jumping passes not being where it could have been, yet he smiled and had this beautiful step sequence to this uh, Beatles medley as if the music was like coming out of him. And now, you know what? I get to add another moment to my list. It's your 2018 Olympics team event. It's learning all the struggles, every step in your journey and your emotional journey you've experienced for this very moment and what was going through your mind at every step of that performance. I just cannot watch it without crying anymore. So thank you so much for for sharing all of that, Mira. It just means so much to me personally, and I know that it means so much to the people who are watching this. But for, for everyone who's listening right now, I would like to repeat that Mirai and I did this interview to raise awareness of the mental health of young athletes who are asked to have so much on their shoulders while their brains are biologically still in development who needs the adults surrounding them to not only focus on their successes or failures, but to support them by giving them appropriate perspective, um, as well as emotional acceptance and assistance. Treatment for mental health exists, and they may look different from individual to individual, but they indeed could be helpful. The emotional journey of young athletes isn't talked about nearly enough, and it is important for all of us to try to understand it from the ind individual's point of view. So Mirai, I'm sure your story has moved many and your message has been received by many as well. I see you as an ambassador for mental health in the transitional age youth. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you for having me.